in this video we're looking at how to create your tiled project so we're starting with a photograph that we open any photograph you choose is fine and then the next step is going to be to open up just a blank canvas I like to call it you know like a blank sheet of paper a white canvas before we start painting or something like that so something that doesn't have an image on it yet so we're going to start with file new and it gives us a spot to put in a name we're going to actually call it tile and yours probably is set to like five by seven or something like that we're going to put in an eight inches by eight inches square and make sure you change this if it's set to pixels the standard for printing is 300 so we're always going to type in 300 here no matter what when we make something new we're never going to make this lower for sure this will ensure that if we print it that it looks sharp um, and it's high quality for any type of display or contest and we're going to leave it at 8 bit, 8 bit and we're going to leave it with a white background when we press OK we're going to end up with a white square I'm going to pull this tab away and now we'll have our photo back here our white square over here and you should know from the past we can click on our photo and pull our photo and drop it on some white space that's showing and that's now going to put our photo on top of our white tile which it didn't work here so I'm just gonna do that one more time press on my background and drop it on that white space And I think I had a little selection the first two times, so ignore the uh, first two failures there. Uh, but now we're set. Now we have this big photo on this white space. And you see that we've got a background layer of white. Layer 1 is now that photo, and it's sitting above it. If I'm on the Move tool up here, my top tool, and I move this thing around, you see it's floating above the white space. Now, our cameras take pretty big photos. So for the most part, a majority of you when you do this with your own photo the photo is going to fill up most of that white space maybe even all of it so I want you to drag it if it's like this I want you to drag it down so you can see the top left corner and then we're either going to edit transform or I'm going to hit command T command T is going to give me the bounding boxes and then I'm going to shrink it from the corners by holding shift that keeps it in proportion and dragging down the corner and I want to drag this down small enough so that I can fit three photos across the top and I'm just gonna guess visually and I'm gonna leave a little space off the edge just because I want to you don't have to you could put it all the way up if you want but I'm gonna guess again I'm holding shift to do this I guess that's right and then I'll press return to apply that transformation it's called now this is located in the top left so I'm actually going to label this top left. The reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to make nine of these photos and I want to label them where they're positioned. So to duplicate this I'm going to drag it to the little page by the trash can and that's just going to completely duplicate it. Now it's going to say top left copy. If I go over to the move tool again in drag you'll see now I've got two of these these little photos now it's in the top middle I'm gonna go ahead and double click and type in top middle so there's no confusion as I go through all these layers later on now I'm gonna duplicate or copy that one move it over change the name it's the top right so I'm gonna type in top right and I'm just gonna keep doing this until I fill this up with a 3x3 three three grid of these photos. So I'm going to be silent here for a minute and finish this up.
So now I have nine images. You will see I have some extra space just because I put rectangles on here on this square space. So I've got a lot of extra down here. From the past, you'll remember the crop tool. I can just crop this thing to whatever size I want and get rid of that extra space. All right, so that's what we're looking to get. Now we're going to go through some of these adjustment layers that we haven't touched this year. Now, by the way, you can try photo filter. Uh, you can mess with channel mixer if you want. You can mess with color balance, but that's not what we're going to work with. I'm going to work with some stuff here that I, I don't think that you'll ever probably try on your own. Now, first of all, to make sure you're on the right layer, I want you to go through and use the eye. Just click the eye on and off in your layer palette to make sure you're actually on what you want. Now, I want the center one, so I'm on and off. I know I'm the right one. I'm going to click center. When it's highlighted in a blue, that tells me I'm on the right one. Now, I, we need to remember back to some previous lessons. If I don't have this clip to layer checked up in this, this adjustment menu, we have to remember if I click on one of these, I'm going to use black and white to, to easily show this, it's going to change every layer underneath of it. So I have to remember to end this menu to go ahead and hit clip to layer. And what that's going to do is when I click this, you now see that only the center one is affected and there's a little arrow from this adjustment layer pointing down a layer. That means this will only impact the, the photo layer right underneath it. Right, and I'm just going to leave that check for this entire assignment. All right, we're going to pick the top left photo. So I'm going to look for that in my in my layers here. Here's top left. Double checking to make sure I have it, and that's correct. And the first one we're going to do is invert. So I'm just seeing how that works. It makes it a negative. Notice again how it has the arrow. It's only affecting that one. Let's go to the top middle and we're going to do posterize. And when we hit posterize, we have different levels that we can posterize it. Posterize is going to minimize the colors that make the image. So the lower I go here, the more kind of weird and broken up it's going to look. I'm going to put mine, I think, at 4. I'm going to change that to 5. I like 5 better. Let's go to the top right. And we're going to try this one that's called Threshold. Now, Threshold is going to make my entire photo pure black or pure white. And as I move this slider, it adjusts which values are pure black and pure white. So these are just things that I want you to see and be aware of in Photoshop. Let's go to our bottom, or excuse me, our little, our middle, <laughs> our middle left I'm clicking on middle left, double checking to make sure I have that one. And we're going to try something called gradient map. Now, when you hit gradient map, you're going to get one of these rectangles somewhere. On the right side of that rectangle, there'll be a drop down arrow. Now, that drop down arrow will give you several options that Photoshop gives you, really just to replace all the values in your photo with new colors. So we can just try any of these for fun. We also, if we click on this arrow, there are other different um, gradients that you can use in Photoshop, and you can actually load your own someplace from Adobe or online or something. We're just going to stick with these ones. And I'm going to click off of this just to make that disappear. So that's an application of one of Adobe's just kind of default regular gradient maps. Now let's say I really like this, but I want to adjust it a little bit, meaning change the color, add a color, or something like that. Click actually on the colors in the rectangle. And that gives us this window. Now we can move these. Notice how it affects the photo behind it. We can adjust the color. We click on the little slider. That color now shows in this box going to click on the color. I now get a, something to change the color. Let's say I just want this to be a little bit darker red. 
press OK and now change that color. Or let's say I want to add a color. If I click right underneath the rectangle, it adds one of those sliders. Again, I'm going to change the color slightly. Press OK. Let's say I don't like what I did. I can either can click it and press delete or what's even faster is to click down on it and hold it and pull down. As I pull down it will just disappear. So now it's gone. Just one more time. I'm clicking on the slider. Click the color. And let's make this a little bit darker. So that's how I can do that. The sliders up top sometimes adjust transparency. The same thing, you can add those on or you can take them off. So that's just some stuff about gradient maps. We can make our own, we can adjust the ones that we've started with. So I'm going to press OK. And then just remember, for each one of these, I can actually lower the opacity. So let's say I want some of that original color to show through. Just lower the opacity. So just remember that you can do that. Let's slide down to our black and white one. I also want you to remember that you can do things like change the blending mode. I can overlay. You know, and I'm just trying stuff by the way. That's what it does in soft light. Multiply. I can just try things and see. Maybe something will look good, maybe it won't. You just try stuff. So those are just all things to remember. Um, you've seen some assignment examples in class but feel free to have fun with this. Remember you can do things like filters as well. Up here, just try things. Um, and be creative. You don't have to be this structured about it, but that's just to get you guys to learn um, some of these things.